Welcome everyone to a, another episode of Thumbs Up Trailer Services Behind the Scenes. Behind me is the nearly stripped to naked Ambrose. Um, in this series we're going to work on stripping the boat of all the old finishes, show you what we've been doing, show you the process. It's, it's pretty straightforward about how to strip the paint off of the uh, hull, of the hull material. And then we're also going to start talking about uh, prepping the surfaces and what kind of paint we're going to select for this boat because it is aluminum. Aluminum can be difficult to paint. And that selection might surprise you. I think we alluded to that, alluded to that in another video. And then uh, again, all the prep work and things before we paint, then priming it, and then finally painting this because we've really got to get this done before we really go any farther. So we do have a little welding to do watched our trouble uh, with transoms video uh, on the back and we'll probably cover that actually in this video this because we didn't we've been waiting for the spool gun to get here and it's on back order a lot of things are back order right now right so it's gonna be another two or three weeks but we didn't want to delay that because we've got a lot of work to do so without any further delay we're going to take you for a walk around on the boat show you what we've stripped and then we'll show you the uh, um, process is pretty easy of using this uh, chemical stripper to get this paint off. So as you can see, uh, we've started on the starboard side. We started here and then we worked our way down on the boat. And we're taking the paint off just to the water line here. I'm leaving the anti-fouling paint in place. Simple reason. Somebody's already removed it. It's only one coat. And uh, generally speaking, we can get away with that. We could put... Uh, anti-fouling paint over anti-fouling paint a couple times before we have to strip it. But the upper half of the boat here had no less in places than four coats of paint. And the original finish on this boat was avocado. It was a baked enamel from StarCraft. You either got these boats in the 70s in avocado or like a tan. And unfortunately, this one was avocado. So that was our first layer. Then somebody came along and said, hey, avocado is kind of a cool paint. To camo the boat so then somebody had done some camoing of the boat to camouflage it uh, for some reason interesting then over that somebody said this boat would look really good in harley davidson orange that was the next layer the layer beyond that was like a dark chocolate brown it looked like decent quality enamel and then the last coat which is the one you're seeing here is some type of, I don't know, Macalac house paint or something. It is a house paint, I can tell because of how it was peeling. A uh, very thin coat and put on by a roller and brush. So this stuff all had to get removed. And uh, it is a time consuming process. We probably have around 20 hours into this boat, maybe more, maybe like more like 24 hours into stripping this. But um, we will take a short, brief walk around here to show you what we've done and then uh, we will show you uh, the rest of the process here of uh, we're just going to show it once of stripping it and because uh, once you've seen it once you don't need to watch me do the rest of it because it's really boring so we have the transom completely stripped this is the first area we did because we had to do the transom as you've seen in our previous videos we also have all the rivets in place and sealed, okay, with 3M sealer uh, for all the holes that were in the back of this, uh, all the holes that we're not going to use for all the accessories that were put on over the years. We just don't want them anymore. Here is the starboard side of the transom completely stripped down to the water line. And the paint that we're going to use is a paint that is what they call above the water line, meaning you can't use it as a bottom paint, it won't hold up but uh, holds up extremely well above the water line. And the next shots we're gonna show you here, we'll show you the uh, top of the bow here, and then the top of the hard top, which is also stripped. And you can see around the front edge here, I still have to do this leading edge around the hard top on the top. That's probably the last thing I'll do because it seems like an easy project. And, by that point, oh, in the front of the bow here, this, this bow cap, if you will, where the two sides of the bow come together is riveted. Those seem like really easy projects, something that I could finish the project with because it 
is, like I said, time consuming and, and tedious. But there you can see that the uh, bow is stripped and all the gunnels are stripped all the way down the side of it. And uh, what we've got to do here now on this is, uh, oh, there's my finger, is we've got to DA all these surfaces because you see there's still like a little green avocado tint to it. And we're going to DA that with 380 grit. And DA is dual action sander. So it's a sander that goes multiple directions. All right. It's just not in a circle. And it'll knock that stuff right off and get us prepped for paint. We've also been at the same time, this uh, product we're using is fantastic for removing all this caulk along the window seams and down here where the various parts of the, the boat um, meet and mate and are assembled. And we've got to come along all these seams again before we paint and put in 5200 sealer, a bead of 5200 sealer, make sure we seal the boat, keep the water out. But the, uh, we'll show you the roof here in a minute. I can't get all the way up there. I'll go up on the ladder and just show it to you. But she's really come a long way. And uh, prep is everything. So painting is like, what, 10% of the entire job. I can't wait till we get to the painting part because that's usually pretty fun. So here is here is the top of the hard top. As you can see, uh, we have it stripped. That side I haven't cleaned yet. Uh, I use a vacuum to suck all that debris up. That's all dry paint that came off, little uh, dust, paint dust, if you will, from from uh, scouring it off. But uh, again, up at this windshield, we'll have to put 5200 sealer in along it where it meets the roof of the hard top. So what we're using is total boat, total strip. Comes in gallons. Um, Amazon is selling this right now for $71 a gallon plus tax. We've used to go as far as we have now, two and a half gallons. There's about a half gallon left in this. I'm gonna try to make it on the last half gallon here on the start or on the port side. Maybe I can make it, maybe I can't. We'll have to see. I might need another gallon. But um, it's a great product. I've been letting it sit. It depends on how many layers you got. I've varied this. I tried an hour and a half, then I've tried all the way up to 12 hours. And what I found is three hours seems to be the sweet spot with this stuff. It doesn't really do much more after three hours because this stuff eats into the paint downwards to the lower layers. And it just eventually loses its punch on so many layers of paint. So after three hours, it's done about what it's going to do. I'll go in, remove it, scrape it off, there's still layers of paint I can't get off. I will reapply it, and we'll show you that, how we do that. Let it sit again, and then go back and scrape the rest off. I finish it up um, around the rivets when I'm done uh, scraping. So I'm using, um, using various size scrapers. Okay, that's like a three inch, and all the way down to like an inch and a half. And then once I'm all done around the rivets, I'm using a, a brass, not wire, brass, a brass wire brush, not a like steel wire brush. I don't want to scrape, it's, it's softer than the aluminum. I don't want to scrape up the aluminum, uh, put big gouges in it. So I'll go around the rivet, rivets, pop rivets in the side of the boat with that. Works really well. Then we wash it all down. Um, with some rags and some lower mineral spirits after we're all done to get all the what we can off of it, you know. It's all got to be sanded, like I said. We'll sand it uh, down. We use probably scotch bright pads and uh, 380 sandpaper on a DA but uh, to get our adhesion right. But like I say, we're just going from this water line here up. And our bop our a blade of paint we're only going to allow up about two inches or three inches back in here he had it way up on here we don't want that it, it was totally unnecessary it's almost ridiculous and uh, so once we get her painted uh, we could come back at any time and do the ablative paint uh, which we'll probably do this winter all right we're gonna apply some of this uh, total strip now to the boat Gonna have to stir it up. It's got like an oil base to it. So it's a bit gummy. 
and that's a good thing because it sticks to vertical surfaces and surfaces upside down and things. So make sure you stick, you just stir it really well before you apply it. And the way you're going to want to apply it is I'm just using the chip brush here, but you're going to want to leave further directions, a good eighth of an inch thickness of this stuff. And you just kind of smear it on, kind of like that, gently. Don't brush it thin. Remember, this stuff has to be a little bit thick because it gets sucked into the paint. And if you don't put enough on, you leave it kind of dry, then you're just going to take off, you know, maybe the superficial first coat of paint or maybe get into the second. And you definitely, on a boat like this, depending on how much thickness you got, want to make sure that you get uh, enough, whoop, get enough on there that it goes deep. going to do a section here, a section that I call a workable section, one that uh, I can manage. And we're just going to go straight down to the water line with this in this manner. Good idea to have a drop cloth on the floor too, because you do drop a little bit. doing this all the way down and then we'll show you the next step in a minute time for a quick intermission before our next step I failed to mention that we had made a paint selection and there it is Rust-Oleum marine coatings yes Rust-Oleum does have a marine product line topside paint and um, we have a little lady painted in this, and it's held up well. Now, I mean, we're working on a commercial boat here. Um, not one that's, uh, you know, I mean, it's nice, but it's not a, uh, you know, luxury liner. This stuff has held up really well for us on the little lady. Um, it's oyster white, which really is kind of like a, like a very, like a, almost a canvas, I want to say. It's, it's not really white. It's kind of like almost a light tan. But um, we got ourselves a whole bunch of quarts of this, and uh, we're going to use that on the Ambrose. So it'll pretty much match the little lady. But we find it extremely durable, easy to apply, and uh, it doesn't break the bank. Um, now, we can only buy it in quarts right now. I think maybe that's because of COVID. It wasn't the case, I think, the last time we did this, but, um, you know, it comes in quartz. Uh, I think it was seventeen eighty eight with free shipping through Walmart.com. We tried to go to Home Depot. Uh, they had a back order on it. So it just wouldn't clear for a couple weeks. So we went to Walmart, and lo and behold, three days later, they shipped it to us. So we got ourselves eight quarts of that. I always buy over because once you start <clears throat> this process, you can't run out of paint because there's a, an inf there's not an infinite amount of time that you can apply between coats. You've got to be within what the manufacturer's recommendations are. But uh, it's a good paint. Now there, there's another paint out there too called Aluma Hawk, A L U M A H A W K, I believe. And I'm really interested in trying that one out, but unfortunately they didn't have the color that I wanted. And I've heard from some guys some really good things about that Aluma Hawks, but I'll tell you what, uh, there's two good quality paints for painting aluminum boats, and I bet a lot of folks don't know that Rust-Oleum does have a Marine Coatings uh, line of products that uh, are pretty impressive and held up well for us. So there you go. So we've got our section here we're gonna do about an eighth of an inch of this good stuff on there. The next thing I'm going to do is take a disposable, very thin drop cloth. Drain it out here. And you're going to want to get it up here. 
and you're going to want to simply tack it onto the surface of what of the stripper. Alright, just like that. We're using some tape to hold this in place just to make sure. There we go. Another piece over here that we can cut. I missed here. And cut back really quick. Get this all on there. Like that. You're gonna let this sit on there, like I said. You know, I got four layers of paint here I'm playing with. Five. So I found that three hours seems to work well. Anything over that. Well, doesn't seem to really do any better. So three hours seems to be the magic number, at least in my application. Do it and take there it is. And uh, once three hours passes, we will come back and check it out. Take the plastic off and start uh, scraping the paint off. Now, you will see in that next clip, I actually started way back down here. So things are a little bit out of order. Take some time to film things, you know. My neighbor is mowing the field next to me. You hear that mom we're running out there. But, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's all just about getting you guys to process so you can see it. So, I'm going to leave that like that for three hours. When we come back, this will be bubbled off, and you'll see it in the next clips because I've already done all the way down here. The next clips will be showing us working on this, but uh, you will get the idea here. Pretty straightforward. So we've had our paint remover on for exactly three hours with the plastic over it. And as you can see, the, pa the paint is lifted. Whether it's lifted all the way down to aluminum, well that would be fantastic, is the question. So we've got two sections here. We're gonna do this smaller section first. And the important thing is, try to only work the section um, that you're working with at the time. You don't want this stuff to dry out because if it becomes like concrete, you gotta do it all over again. So what I'll do is on the top of this gunnel rail here, let me step back, so I'm gonna remove this plastic down to this rubber rail strip and I'll tape it here, tape it over there so that this thing kind of folds down or folds down like this, it exposes this area. We'll scrape this one first and then once we get that done, we'll move down to this uh, lower section. We'll just take the plastic all the way off. All right, so I actually have you guys strapped here to a dolly cart <laughs> with a uh, pair of uh, pliers here, clamps. And we're gonna work on this upper section here first. Gotta go get my scraper and my tape. And my wire brush. Here we go. See what we can do here. Oops, sorry. Need to bump you. I'm just going to tape it here. Tape it here. Off the saw. We got a good start on it. We're just going to hang it like that. Come in here with our scraper. Start scraping all of this off. Now you can see this green paint underneath that. Got kind of pressed a little bit hard. This green paint has been a pain in my butt all the way around this boat, but uh, seems to be coming off. So, got to work kind of quick. It's warm in here. 
keep your edge working, a little pressure down on it. Believe me, you're going to go through a lot of these scrapers. I got a bunch of them because you'll wear them out. Take that right up to the edge, coming all the way down. And uh, it doesn't make too much of a mess. This stuff does dry relatively quick once you expose it. You're going to want to work efficiently. And we're just going to keep doing this all the way down the side of the boat. Get my Popeye arm here. And that went right down the aluminum there. That's nice. No rhyme or reason why some of it is harder to get off than other, other than the adhesion was probably better on some of it. You've got to come up like this to get this bevel edge, right? Kind of work it like that. Back and forth. Get your edge clean, it'll get gummed up. And you just keep going. Just like that. Get all your paint off. Now this one's actually, this section's going really nice. I shouldn't say that too loud. But it is just time consuming. You can see it's already starting to get dry there. I have to wipe that off. Davidson orange if you can see that. So yeah, I mean it's kind of like peeling an onion. You can see everything, all the mistakes people made over the years, trends and style or purpose for the boat. Kind of gives you a little bit of history and sometimes gives you wondering what people had in mind or if they were just plain old and simply out of their mind when they did what they did. Okay. finish this up you guys are probably already bored with it okay <clears throat> got the area roughly scraped I'm gonna show you what I do to a rivet here Let's see here I think there's a rivet right there yeah there it is okay due to the rivets take your wire brush because you got paint around it you can't get off just do that comes right off there are areas on here, little spots every now and then. For some reason, the paint just will not be affected by this stuff. I can't figure that one out. The other thing you got to make sure is that the uh, stripper that you are using um, is compatible with aluminum. And the best way to do that is to talk to, like, Total Boat uh, before you do this. I talked to Total Boat about Total Strip, and they said, yep, yeah, it'll be just fine with aluminum. Not a problem. It won't tack it. Just attacks the paint. Try to get all this rough stuff off of here. And they even painted my rub strip here and it's god awful color. So we're just gone in here and taking that paint off too so it's aluminum again, which is really nice. Just give it a knock all the stuff off of it. Best you can. Get all of it off and up underneath the rub strip there. Knock it all down. And the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to get some mineral spirits in a rag and we're going to wipe this area. Get all this stuff off. That'll complete the area. Then we'll move down and do the same process over again. We just keep doing this again and again and again and again. One thing to note as well, got a rag here, heavily doused with mineral spirits. Is not only is the paint stripper flammable, but obviously the things you're using to clean it with, like mineral spirits are flammable. So spark, smoking, anything like that, okay? And you just don't want to come in here 
and rub this clean as best you can. All the residue. Like I say, you're gonna have to come back and DA this anyways. But we have got the paint off of here. And see it's warm in here. I've already ran out of mineral spirits, so I'll be right back. I've got to put douse this with some more mineral spirits. Whoop, I'm tripping over stuff here now. Getting exciting. Okay, we're back. We really got our soap this time, so this should take it off. Yep, here we go. I can even rub some of the paint I didn't get off with it, which is good because it's soft. If you see that, you can get away with it. Perfect. You know, let's keep doing it. Get in all these seams, right? Flat board seams. Wipe it all off. Get it all out. There's no doubt little spots like that. You might try to go back and hit again with a little remover to get off, or you just DA it off. We're going to be here to DA anyway, so got to do a whole boat. That'll be the next step. But, uh, let's see, if you can get it off now when it's soft, it's time to get it off. You really can't get into a DA with some of these seams really well. But she's looking pretty darn good, as you can see. Cleaned up rather well. And we will forge, forge on to the next layer down below. And we'll just keep doing it. and Keep moving on. <clears throat> okay, so what you can see here is up here, this is pretty typical. I've had really good results on the top. As I get going down towards the water line, it's like they threw extra paint on here. The bottom coat or the water or anti-foul blade of here came off really well because it's only one layer. But this stuff right through here, I'm going to have to coat it again. I'll probably let it set about 20 minutes without plastic on it. Come back, scrape that off, and clean it up like the rest. That's how it's been going on this project. So. We will do that, and we'll be back so you can see the results. Hopefully they look like that. All right, it's about 20 minutes later, and as you can see, just by applying that on there, we got the majority of us that paint off. I'm running into this problem a lot on around the edge of this boat. That's the original avocado, and you can see the spots here. Now, I've started DAing it off on the other side. It comes off, but this particular uh, uh, paint stripper just and spots won't touch it, and I just can't figure it out. But we'll have to do the same thing as take a DA and zip along here and wipe that out. But, you know, 95, 98% of our, well, I call it 99% of our paint is gone. It's ready to go. I'm going to have to have same luck, hopefully, with that section there. And then we do another section, another section, until it's all the way done. As you can see, we're getting close to getting the boat entirely done, which just makes me ecstatic because I'm about tired to do with this. Another thing worth mentioning is I got a five gallon bucket with dish soap in it, just standard dish soap. This is where I wash my brass brush and I also use it to knock the stuff off my hands. So I'll do that to the brush and then just tap out all the garbage on the side, right? To keep the, the brush clean, as clean as I can. And then, you know, you get a lot of this on your arms, forearms and hands. Um, I wipe, I dip in there and get the stuff off my hands as well. Wipe down with a clean cloth. Highly recommend obviously using gloves. Um, when doing this, it probably might be something you want to do. I don't. I have skin of iron. I guess doesn't stuff doesn't affect me. So that's going to do it for this episode of stripping bolt holes of old tired paint. Uh, we'll get this finished up over the next few days here. One thing I do want to mention to you is um, you can't do this in extreme temperatures. Right now it's extremely hot in Michigan. Um, when it's getting over 80 degrees and I'm trying to apply that stripper, it tends to want to dry out before I can get the complete section done. So I'm doing this in the early morning and evening out of the heat of the day. And that I guess would go for either case of extremely cold temperatures or extremely hot temperatures. You know, Extremely cold probably would have a um, detrimental effect on the reaction with the paint. Uh, I haven't really checked in that, but maybe I should. But, anyways, 
couple of days here we'll get this all finished then we're going to do a pot pourri type episode where we come back hopefully our, our uh, spool gun will be in so we can weld this transom cap uh, we'll put those uh, hardened rivets in where we showed you we had to put them in finish that up for good then we got some fuel tank uh, brackets on, the, on the, each gunnel of the boat that we're not going to use anymore that we got to remove and then plug and rivet those holes we'll show that then we're going to get into removing uh, the flooring or decking uh, inside the boat and uh, get that prepped for new plywood so beyond that we'll be doing an episode on the um, gimbal unit we got to rebuild that we've got to put a gimbal bearing in it bellows um, clean it thoroughly clean it and repaint it with uh, mirror cruiser phantom black along with the outdrive we've had done since february so those things have got to be done so it's gonna be kind of like a Next couple episodes will be a pop pourri of different things that we're doing here. Until next time, it's been Captain Carl Birdside. Thank you for joining us on YouTube. Um, why don't you subscribe to us? We'll watch us work on the old Ambrose here. And uh, you can visit us also on Facebook at Thumbs Up Charter Services or on Google at Thumbs Up Charter Services in Seabling or Bayport. That's two words, Bayport, Michigan. Until next time. I wish you tight lines and great times on the Great Lakes. And remember, at Thumbs Up Charter Services, we are wild for walleye. Take care, folks.